Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Yes. And I'm glad that I'm hoping that there's a whole bunch of church members out there with us. Excuse me. As we get into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord says, Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and praise him in the congregation of the saints. The word tells us, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and heart. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. And then he said, praise ye the Lord. Amen. So on that, let us lift up our hands to God and worship his holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being our king. Thank you, dear Lord, for being the creator of all things. And that, Lord, you are near unto all of us this evening. We praise you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Dear Lord, we thank you for your, your stretched out arm to us, dear God. We thank you. Hallelujah to your name. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, dear Lord. Thank you, our King, our great God, our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. And um, as we... Um, continue on into the church worship service. I want to give a shout out to Shimona, and I want to give a shout out to Sister Brittany and various others. Shout out to all of you, and we appreciate each one that's serving God. Yeah. Shout out to Brother Glover also. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and take up the offering. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And below me is a place where you can give. All you have to do is go to that link, click on it. Once you click on that link, it's self-explanatory on how you can give, right? It's nothing complicated about it. So anyway, let us go ahead and pray that God will bless both the gift and the giver tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving. In Jesus' name, amen. And we appreciate your giving and you know what we are doing, right? Our God is good. Amen. And this is a special church worship service. A special church worship service, our night services. All the services are special. I don't want to downplay any of them. But our night services are for the feeding of the flock of God. That is the whole deal. We want to feed the church and, uh, and we want you to grow and we want you to get stronger. And listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. At, at, when we were in the Zoom meeting, I can tell that you have been growing. I can tell that you have been growing, that you've been walking with God. I can see the growth in all of you, in all of you. And I can call out each individual name. But but I you know but but I see the growth in Sister Natalie Bullard, I see the growth in Shimona, I see the growth in Sister Brittany, I see the growth in Sister Alice Gay, I see the growth in um, various ones uh, that that's been online that have been consistently coming along online, and, and I just I, and you guys are doing good. I don't want you to the devil to lie to you, and and I want to bring this out to you that what you need to do is focus on your growth. Focus on your growth because it's all about what you are becoming. Happiness is about what you are, to, what am I becoming? What am I, what am I um, becoming? You're becoming more and more like God, right? You, you're getting there. So, so yes, there are failures that take place. Yes, things may go on in our life, but look, look how far we've gone, right? Look how many church service we, we've been making it to. Let's look at some of the good things. Yes. And, it, and it helps to propel you forward. Mm -hmm. And so we want to continue to grow. Our God is good. And the making church is getting stronger and stronger, right? Don't worry about those who have dropped off. You know, because the COVID has a way of seemingly 
and, and us having church online has exposed some things, has exposed some things. And some people drop off and some people keep on going, right? And so we want to keep on going for God. And there are some that I didn't make mention of their names, so, but I, I can see the growth in people. But you need to see your own growth yes. because that's where you're going to get the drive to grow even more. Okay, so anyway, um, let us go ahead and we're going to get on into this uh, church worship service. Did we pray over the gift and the, giver, the offering? Okay, praise God. Let's get on with it. We're in the book of Job. We're in the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 10 through 12. Job, chapter 36, verse 10 through 12. And to God be all of the glory, y'all. We want to give God all of the glory. And the Lord is not into wasting people's time. Your time is precious. You have uh, selected this time out to... to to be in church, you want to hear from God, and I believe that God is going to answer the prayers of men and women. I'll see the growth in Sister Constance. Brother Lance, God is good, isn't he? All right, let's keep it going here. Job chapter 36, verse 10 through 12. The word reads, He openeth also their ear to discipline, and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. It says, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Let me read that one more time. The word says in Job 36, verse 10 through 12, he openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. And with the help of the Lord, we want to preach on a message entitled, The Weapon Called Discipline. The Weapon Called Discipline. Let us pray. Reverend Serrano, if you don't mind asking God's blessing upon this church worship service, please. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the reading of your word, Lord, for the message tonight, Lord God, for dealing specifically, Lord God, with discipline in our lives, Lord. We pray that you touch each and every one of us. Help us to listen and take in, Lord God. Lord God, to take in with pleasure that your words has proceeded from your mouth, Lord. We ask that you bless Pastor as he brings forth that message. Bless him, unction him, strengthen him, Lord God. Make the message clear in his heart and mind. We pray that this message will glorify and lift you up. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's have a good time with this. And let's take this so that we can grow. I appreciate that prayer. The weapon called discipline. There is an author of a book by the name of Dan Kennedy, and I want to quote something that he said. He said, self-discipline aimed and applied at a particular thing is quite literally a magic power. When you focus your self-discipline on a single purpose, like sunlight through a magnifying glass on a single object, look out. The whole world will scramble to get out of your way. Hold the doors open for you and salute you as you walk by. That is quite powerful tonight. Discipline is a very powerful weapon. And all of us need that in our life. And all of us, including yourself, Pastor, I don't have too much discipline. I don't have too much of it, but you can have it tonight. You can have it tonight because you can live for God. You were not made from an alien. You did not come from the devil. Mm -hmm. You were not created by something else out there. You were created from, uh, by God. You were created by God, and you are capable of getting this weapon moving in your life called discipline. And I, use, I utilize the word weapon because it is a, 
it, it is something that you can use to, to command your life, right? That causes you to be able to go when you don't feel like going. Causes you to be able to control and guide yourself when you don't, uh, when you are seemingly trying to get out of line. When a person is like that, when a person has command of their mind, when a person can control themselves and bring every thought into subjection unto the obedience of Jesus Christ, that person has uh, pretty much uh, made a, a, a powerful weapon in their life, and that is called discipline because they are able to, uh, to be temperate. I think the word is they are able to be uh, self-controlled in everything in their life. Let's get on with it. Our God, our Lord and Savior, wants his church to have discipline. For discipline is a major benefit for you and not necessarily for God. Listen to me now. Discipline is a major benefit for you and not necessarily for God. Right now I'm selling discipline, I guess. I'm selling it because I want you to I want you to to get so hungry for this in your life that you begin uh, to apply this. You begin to live this out because the more discipline you have, the stronger you become. Then the stronger you become, uh, the easier it is for us to bear things. The easier it is for us to, to live a life uh, that will cause God to move every which way in our life. Yes. Okay, now, now the discipline is, is for, for us and not necessarily for God. We need it in our life. It benefits us more than it benefits God. Yes, the Holy Spirit, yes, it's easier for him to deal with us when we have a discipline working in our life. That is true. But let me tell you something. You and I are the ones that got to make it to heaven. You and I are the ones that have to learn how to, uh, how to utilize the word of God to use the knowledge of the word of God, that it will serve a purpose in our life. The word of God, the knowledge of the word of God is not there in our heart so that we can just plumb be able to uh, uh, quote scriptures and, and show how great we are in the word of God, right? The word, the knowledge of the word of God is to be used to help us to profit and bring forth fruit in this life. Yes. We have to be able to take the knowledge that we have and begin to cause it uh, to uh, direct us to where we can draw from God incredible gifts, incredible power uh, from the Lord. If we use these, the knowledge that we have, we can become great in God. Yes. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah concerning God, and this is the reason why I say not necessarily for God, that discipline is for us. He said, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, and that... Uh, uh, and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. So this is what God is saying. I am God all by myself. Yes. God really does not need us. He wants us, yes, but God really does not need us. The Bible also tells us that he chastises us for our benefits. He's not like our parents who, when they chastise us, they chastise us for uh, their own pleasure, right? But God chastises us or disciplines us for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness, yes. that we may have the fruits of holiness uh, in our life, that we will bring forth righteousness and that we will bring forth godliness. As the word says, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. So brothers and sisters, we need to make discipline a major force in our life. We need to, uh, to, uh, to allow that thing to grow in our life. For discipline is uh, almost like magic. Not that it is magic, because I don't necessarily believe in magic, 
But the thing is, when a person has discipline, the man Dan Kennedy is absolutely right. Look out. Look out when discipline is applied to a purpose. Yes. Amen. How do you get discipline? Knowing that Jesus wants us to be disciplined. Well, how do you do it? First of all, you have to take care of the small disciplines. Amen. The small stuff. The little stuff. Because if we don't take care of the little stuff, we will not be capable of taking care of the big stuff. Now, I'm trying to help someone out there. I'm trying to help my church members to get on board with this here. Because I want you to grow and I want you to get better and I want you to be strong and I want you to be unmovable yes, yes. because this is the thing, y'all, with discipline worked in your life and you begin to work the little small things that you know that you can do, those things begin to grow into bigger things. Yes. You get stronger and stronger in that. And then your walk with God become deeper and you need this walk with God because it is through a walk with God that we are able to pray, right? The Bible said that the Lord is what? A son and a shield. Yes. He is He is son. He is a son. And to me, that means he, he gives life. He gives light to us. He gives nourishment through his sun rays to us. And he is a shield. He is a protector, right? Yes. He said no good thing. Listen to me, y'all. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly before him. When you have discipline, your walk with God gets deeper. It becomes easier and easier to walk up rightly before God. When you're able to command your life, you're able to prioritize your life. You're able to pray at a set time. You're able to uh, uh, be on time with God. You're able to put God first. You're able to walk with him. You're able to know him. You're able to tell yourself, no, I'm not going to partake in that. Yes. You begin to surrender to God. and You begin to apply uh, praying the Holy Ghost. You don't uh, uh, listen to the lies of the devil. Discipline is, is there. It's getting stronger. It's getting beat up. Your walk gets deeper. And you get to a place where that scripture begins to apply to your life and you begin to pray to God for, for things and God just gives it to you. Why? He has to fulfill his promise. Yes. And in order for us to walk those steps, we must exercise discipline. Amen. Discipline is needful this morning or uh, tonight. Through discipline, you can get what you want from God because you have the discipline to walk uprightly. Mm -hmm. Through discipline, you can overcome the flesh because you command your mind by surrendering to the Spirit. As the Word of the Lord says to us all, that if we walk in the Spirit, yeah. we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, brothers right. and sisters. And sometimes uh, you need more than motivation. Yes. Sometimes uh, you need more than, than someone giving you a pep talk. Because there's not, uh, some, sometimes uh, uh, there will be times in our life where there won't be any words. There won't be, it, it's, it's hard to find a word somewhere that will help us out. Yes. It's hard to, to look for some type of a, a tangible resource, if you would. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we need to do is begin right now while things are going good. We need to start this thing tonight. Yes. We cannot wait till tomorrow. Uh, you, we need to start working discipline in our life tonight. And because it will bless you in due time. Amen. Yes, Jesus exercised it, exercised it in his life. He exercised it. It's, the Bible even said he learned obedience uh, through the things by the things that he suffered. Jesus had suffered, but he learned obedience. Obedience and discipline work hand in hand together, brothers and sisters. It is a character thing. It is a character. It, a discipline is there to chisel out the right type of character that we need in our life. So that when all the circumstances all around us is going one way, we have the strength and the power from within to go in the opposite direction. Why? Because we have the discipline to follow the Spirit of God instead of our circumstances. Yes. Instead of uh, uh, being poor to tell a lie. 
being pulled a sin against God. When the pressure and the peer pressure and the way that the world talks and, the, and, and everything is going on in our life, we will be able to say no to it. Yes, amen. We need discipline. Discipline is a must. That's the reason why over in the book of Job, again, it says, He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from their sins or iniquity. Then I like verse 11. Listen to it. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in what? Prosperity, not poverty. And their years in what? Pleasures. Pleasures. Amen. Well, people who have discipline have more time. People who have discipline can enjoy fun stacked on top of fun mm -hmm. because they are at peace with themselves. People look at discipline as a form of a of a self hatred, but really discipline is a is really self love. Yes. You love yourself. Hallelujah. You must care about you. Yes. You must care about your Jesus. Yes. Care about your salvation. Love yourself enough to say, "I will exercise this great weapon yes. in my life because I am a child of God and I deserve the best." Because I am a child of God. Yes, we need that moving in our life tonight. We need that uh, uh, pushing us in that dry, uh, uh, to this night. We need to exercise this. And it will make you stronger and, and more happier than you've ever been Amen. when you have discipline. That's right. We'll be further along in our life. All of us know that if we exercise discipline. We probably would have made some good grades back in high school if we exercised the discipline. Yeah. Probably would have made great ranks in the military if we exercised discipline. If we exercise discipline, our marriage can be wonderful and the raising of our children can be great. Yes. But you have to have that in your life. Because if you whipped up here, if you whipped up here, the whole bottom has just fell out. There's nothing like growth. Yes. I want you to really focus on that tonight. I cannot be the only one that see it in your life. You have to see it. Jesus wants his disciples to have this working in their lives. The Lord can do it tonight. The Lord can do it. But he needs something to work with. He said, will you exercise just a little bit of this? Will you allow this thing to be a part of your character? Will you allow this thing uh, to happen in your life called discipline? Yes, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you really need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with praying for the Holy Ghost in your house. It's nothing wrong with praying for the Holy Ghost right there in your house. You know, um, I'm not trying to beat an old dead horse. But it's amazing what a made-up mind can do. A made-up mind cures it all. Mm. It really does. Yeah. A made-up mind cures it all. When people make up their mind to do something, they get, it seems like every virtue begins to work toward what they made up their mind about. Especially when they know Jesus. When your mind is made up, why not get the baptism of the Holy Spirit? i tell you how a made-up mind works. A made-up mind works like this. You have some people who go around, they've been to different churches, and they look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit as something scary or something weird. But they come to a church meeting and they make up their mind, I'm going to serve God. And they hear the preacher preach about the Holy Spirit baptism, and because they have made up their mind for God, they figure out how to get over their fear and they begin to ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No matter what church they went to, no matter what they saw, because they have really made up their mind from the very bottom of their soul. Yes. Yes. And they cry out to Jesus. See, see, they get to figuring it out. They get to really rethinking it when they have a made up mind. They really get to rethinking now, you know, was I looking at that right? Mm -hmm. See, a made-up mind again that goes, goes deeper. Now, I'm still dealing with discipline, but the thing is, we need power. We need the Holy Ghost baptism. But, and the thing is, is that uh, uh, your, when your mind is made up, you go beyond 
uh, indoctrinations of, of ch uh, childhood indoctrinations. You yes. go beyond all that. You go beyond what mama believed and the things that you were taught as a child. You're, yes. re you're willing to say, you know what, I'm ready to rethink this because I have really made up my mind for this. I know uh, uh, consciously what I'm doing. Yes, amen. And you figure it out. And you get over what all the fears and you reach out and say now, and you figure this out. You say, now, if I'm asking Jesus to give me the Holy Ghost, it can't hurt if he gives me the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You figure it out. But people who don't have a made up mind, everything is hard. Mm -hmm. They can't even figure out how to get around anything because they're still on the fence. The, uh, the, uh, if you're on the fence tonight, if you're on the fence tonight, if there's somebody out there that is on, on the fence, I got news for you. You will never figure it out. You will never get the answers that you need. All right. Until you get off of that fence. Yes. Because the healing of Jesus only happens when people say, I'm in it for better or for worse. Amen. Amen. Discipline. The Holy Ghost. Baptism. We have the blood of Jesus, yes. But it's time to ask the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will help you in your discipline, but he will not do all the work. A lot of times people uh, look at it as though uh, once I get the Holy Ghost, it's over. That's the way I looked at it. I looked at it like that, but I find myself, man, uh, man, I, I'm lacking somewhere here. And a lot of times we lack, we lack in the thing that we lack in knowledge. We lack in a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a little bit of personal development, but I believe that some people really do need personal development in their <coughs> life. And one major key, brothers and sisters, you have to. You must exercise discipline. Yes. Sometimes you just, just Discipline is an easy thing to exercise, and I'm going to quit saying discipline. I've been saying discipline all night, it seems like, but I'm dealing with it. All right, go ahead, sir. One way you can exercise discipline is get up a little earlier, just for the sake of it, just for the sake of controlling yourself. I mean, I mean I'm just saying, and pray. It takes discipline to do that, right? When you feel like staying in bed, when you feel like it, get up. And say, I'm going, to, I'm going to spend this time with God. Imagine if you spent 30 minutes earlier in the morning with God. You multiply 30 minutes times, how many days is there a year? In there, is there in a year? Is, how many days are there? Rather? There's 365 days in a year. Multiply 30 minutes times 365 days. And you get up every morning and you pray. Now, that's a lot of hours praying to God. That's a lot of hours of getting a hold to God. How much stronger would that make you? I'm just saying. I'm trying to help my church here. I don't, I don't know what other churches or other people may be watching, but I'm trying to help some folk out here. Amen. Because I want you to have a deep walk with God. I want you to know him in a reality where we can pray over the sick and they recover. Yeah. All right. And so so that being said, what else with that little 30 minutes It's going to lead into other areas of our life that's going to make us even stronger? It's not going to. And then that's going to lead into another area and that's going to lead into another area. And when God really needs you for the big thing, because the Lord said, if we're not faithful in the in the small things, how in the world are we going to be faithful in the big things, right? So, so, so when the big thing come, when you need to be someone that God can depend on, and the Lord has a big thing that you have to accomplish, he can look to you. He can look to you, and he can say, here is some responsibility, and you will gladly take it. And here's a blessing, y'all. You know that you're going to get it done. You know that you're going to make it happen. Right. You begin to be able to trust yourself. Some of us tonight can't even trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you begin to know that you know that you know I'll do what God would have me to do. 
I'll be what God will have me to be. I will say what God will have me to say, and I will go where, where God will have me to go. Why? Because I've been exercising discipline uh, every day in my life. I've been finding ways to exercise discipline. Mm -hmm. You got to do it, y'all. Yeah. To God be all of the glory tonight. Yeah. To God be all of the glory. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need his help, all you got to do, all you have to do is believe that you say. If you believe that you're saved tonight, and, uh, then what I want you to do is get along and ask Jesus for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you want all the help you can, you can to exercise this magical weapon. Amen. Magical weapon. I call it magical. It's not magical, but it'll feel like it once it's applied in your life called discipline. Yes. Oh, if I had the discipline. To say no to that. How much peace I would have today. There's some people that have ruined their life. You know, they make jails for people who don't have discipline. Mm -hmm. They do. People who don't have discipline and lose a lot of money, lots of money. The most undisciplined people in the world, and some of you are going to get offended, are poor people. Yes. Poor, broke, and poor in spirit too, poor in character. And, 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 and I'm trying to help someone out there, you know? The most undisciplined people in the world, they are the ones that just can't figure it out because they are out of control. Mm. They're, just like, they're just like that brand new dog that you walk down the street and you're sitting there trying to, and that, that dog, that little puppy is going all over the place. They just all over the place. That's the way their life is. Their life is just all over the place. Everywhere. It can't even, it, they try to get, and then sometimes, sometimes their attitude is sit on them, sit down on them and stop like this. And they're trying to pull that attitude. And their attitude sitting there <laughs> with, the, with the collar going like that. <laughs> and here you are trying to tug yourself. Come on, come on. And no discipline. No discipline. No discipline. And then, then you're trying to get out the collar. Lack of discipline trying to get out that collar, right? You had a puppy before. I had a puppy before that. That little dude made me so mad. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Then you get mad because you have no discipline. And now here comes some frustration. So now you, there go your happiness. Now you're sad. Now your stomach hurt. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm trying to help someone out there, right? Right? But you got to have this. Work this in your life because it's nothing like seeing on the other side of that spectrum. You see people walking their dogs and their dogs are just sailing along right with them. Yep. Amen. And some of them don't even have a collar on them. And when they say sit, it sits. When they say, and, and no matter what's going on, that, 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 that dog is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, I'm not calling our lives a bunch of dogs. No, I'm not. But I'm using it as an, an analogy. And I want to be able to tell me to sit. Amen. <laughs> and I sit. Yes. No matter what temptation is out there, I'm still sitting. Amen. And when I say move, move. Amen. When I tell my thoughts, Shut that down. It shuts it down. Yes. When I say to my to accept that, it accepts it at my command. Yes. At my command. Thank you, Jesus. And guess what? God has made you capable of doing that. But we have to start with the little things. If you are out of control tonight, I believe that you're saved. I believe that we have some faithful people. But sometimes faithful people can be out of control. Sometimes Holy Ghost people, like I said, Holy Ghost can't do everything. He doesn't do everything. He doesn't do everything, y'all. He, yes, he shall receive power, but you gotta be have enough discipline about you to cooperate. Yes. With the Holy Ghost. Yes, Amen. Right? You gotta have enough discipline to cooperate with the Holy Ghost, and when you have that type of discipline, then you can tell yourself, obey Him. You obey. If, you, if the Holy Ghost say, uh-uh, let's stop for a while, let's sit down, you can make yourself sit. 
We have to have that in our life. And we're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. We'll have a little altar call. Let's have a little altar call. Heavenly Father, I preach your word, dear Lord Jesus. I devote the remainder of this service to the church members. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, if there's someone out there that needs the Holy Ghost, I ask that they will just get on their knees and tell the Lord, I believe that I'm saved. I believe that I know you in a reality. I believe that you have forgiven me of my sin. Now, Jesus, I, I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Ghost. I received the Holy Ghost into my life, and I want you to go ahead and speak in tongues. You're not going to understand it. You're not going to understand it. But let that made-up mind for God. Make, let that made-up mind for the Lord. Make, allow your heart to begin to speak those words through your mouth. And go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Have your way, Jesus. Yes, we Jesus. thank you, Lord. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for, the, for all the things that you have done. And touch these hearts, touch these lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and allow us, God, help us, dear Lord, to operate discipline in our life. And let us grow it and water it and nurture it. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Thank it's you. been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Remember, Tuesday night Bible study. May God bless you real good. We're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. Reverend Serrano, if you don't mind dismissing us, please. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the message tonight, Lord God. Pray that we take it with us, Lord God. Lord God, that we meditate on your wisdom, Lord God, the knowledge that you have given us, Lord God. Bring us back here to... Bible study on Tuesday at 7.30, Lord God, we praise you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. May God bless you real good.